Hey guys, in this video we're gonna be taking a look at the Advanced Stylized Shader, a powerful non-post-process master material with lots of artistic control. I divided this in-depth overview into three parts. First, general walkthrough of all the features. I'm gonna show you how to get started with the shader and how to use all the exposed parameters. We're gonna create an Apple Material instance from scratch. In the second part, I will take a standard PBR asset like this chair or any Quixel Megascan asset and convert it to a stylized version. I'm gonna show you step by step how to do that, how you can reuse default textures and so on. And finally, we are gonna cover more advanced techniques like in-editor AO map baking and using custom masks for better control over procedural effects such as masking out rim light or fake reflection. Okay, but before we start, I need to give you a quick disclaimer, just to be clear. This isn't a tutorial on how to build this shader node by node. It's more of a demo showing you what you can do with the material I've been developing for months now as a part of the advanced stylized framework. I want to respect your time, so if you're here just for the notes or shader logic, feel free to leave the video now or you can stay and watch it as an inspiration as I think it's a bit different approach to cell shading. There are plenty of tutorials out there on this topic, mostly focusing on post-process materials, but don't get me wrong, it is a still valid workflow. And by the way, if you're into that, I would like to recommend you two great videos by Prismatica Dev and Visual Tech Art. It's an absolutely must watch. So yeah, in general, using Unreal Engine for stylized rendering can be actually a bit tricky. I wanted to solve those problems. So with that said, let's dive into the first part of the Advanced Stylized Material Overview. All right, so in the pack, I also included several uh, example meshes so you can test your materials with. There are also templates with predefined material instances so you can you know, test those as well. But for now, let me grab this Apple mesh and actually let's create a completely empty level so we can get started. So for the scene setup, I get a post-process volume with locked exposure. Uh, I also like to test my materials on a colorful background. Uh, so I got this post-process material, uh, which is by the way, also included in the pack. Uh, you can also introduce some post-process outline that you know gives extra detail and gives you that stylized vibe to the asset but it's completely up to you if you're gonna use it or not. Then I got directional light so you get control over this procedural effect and I think that's pretty much all you need for the scene setup. So let me now duplicate the apple so we get like a reference on what we are working on. So now let's go ahead and create a Material instance, call it stylized apple, and let's drag and drop on the mesh. When you open up the material instance you just created, you get access to a bunch of exposed parameters that control the shader. So you can think of them like a layer system or features that you can enable or disable for a particular material. So you start off by defining the base color, either by a color map or procedural gradient. Then you start adding details or procedural effect like fake reflection, directional light and so on. So let's go ahead and define the color first. So let's change the color to red. Maybe something like, like this. And I want this material or this apple to have like a gradient going from top to bottom where on the bottom it's a bit darker. So for that we're gonna use the procedural gradient. So once I enable that you can see that there is already gradient happening. But we are actually not sure where it starts or where it ends so let me enable the preview gradient mode. So now you can precisely define how it looks. Let's change the gradient rotation so it points uh, upwards. Let me change to negative 90 and let's change uh, the offset so it's, it's a bit up. Uh, as you can see I added those lines 
uh, the white line represents where the gradient starts and when you decrease the gradient size you can see there is a black line which tells you that here gradient ends okay now let's disable the preview mode and i want it to have the the dark red on the bottom so let me do that maybe actually let's drop the frontal intensity for now you get this nice gradient already here what's cool about this particular gradient is that you can also enable color bending for now we have a completely smooth gradient let me preview that again but once you change the color uh, the gradient bands from 0 to let's say 5 you see that we got this nice sharp uh, transition between those colors so let me disable that so let me set to 3 I think it's a nice little trick or effect that you can enable but for now let me disable to to zero so we have a smooth gradient. When you take a look at the apple on the left, our reference material, you can see it has some spots or pattern on its surface. So let's go ahead and enable this feature on our material as well. To do that, use detail layer. Detail layer is a feature based on a texture or a mask that it's projected onto your mesh. So actually you won't need any UVs for the mesh. So now you can control the scale of this projection, you can drop it, you can change its offset to position it better or change its rotation. So actually you use those parameters to precisely uh, define your pattern. And of course the pattern doesn't need to be you know that simple can enable like a grain or noise texture or maybe some you get some fancy uh, pattern as well you get the idea and finally you can change the color of this effect let's say you want to have like a pink spots or bright spots that's okay but for now let's use the default black color the scale of the detail layer projection is locked by default it means that whenever I scale my object up or down, the projection is scaled accordingly. However, if you have a template and you would like the details to remain the same size across all objects, you can always disable this feature. So now, whenever I scale the object, you see that the dots remain the same size. Now let's move on to my favorite feature of the material, the fake reflection. It helps you to get, you know, that tune, stylized or anime, whatever you want to call it, vibe to your material. So let's go ahead and enable this. It's a sort of a camera based projection that uses a texture, RGB map, RGB packed map with some exposed parameters to control the effect. So let me show you what you can do with that. I'm going to be using the default reflection map included in the pack. It's an RGB packed texture. If the red channel is selected, you can see that it's going to use this pattern of those two lines or stripes. Now, if I change the reflection projection scale, you can see that it starts to introduce the second stripe here. And now if I change the rotation angle, you can see that it dramatically changes how the fake reflection look like. So it's really up to you how you set up those two parameters together. Something maybe like this. And then of course you can change the fake reflection intensity, reflection color. So maybe let's go ahead and choose some orange and then we got the reflection edge offset that creates sort of a gap between the fake reflection and object surface. Something like this. And finally, we got fake reflection sharp option. I added this because 
you can even use a low resolution mask here and it makes the reflection look sharp. Let me disable this feature and let's change the uh, reflection map channel to green. So you can see now it uses this pattern instead. So now we have like a, a, a different fake reflection effect. The same goes with blue channel, which looks like this. So now let's bring back the default fake reflection, something like this. All right, so far so good. But the apple still looks a bit flat for my taste. Let's fix that with the fake directional light feature. So let me grab directional light. So the feature adds sort of a fake specular highlight based on the direction of the main light. And what's really important to understand at this point is that the light doesn't actually illuminate the apple itself. Uh, the material is unlit and all effects or colors for that matter are additive. That's why the light intensity or light color doesn't matter. It is a pure shader effect that you can control with, uh, with material parameters. So let me show you what I mean. Now, what this effect actually does, it sort of uh, amplifies the main color we set up earlier. And since all colors and effects are uh, additive to make it more visible, it's a good idea to reduce the brightness of the main color a bit or increase the fake directional light intensity. You can control the size of the highlight with the bias slider like this. So now we get the proper highlight. I also added a nice little feature, the backlight. It simulates sort of a bounced or reflected light you might expect on the opposite side of the object. And I think it helps to blend the material better at certain scenarios. All right, so the next feature I like to add is the rim light. Think of it as an artificial light that helps to emphasize the shape of your object or add a strong specular highlight to similar to what we see in our reference material. So let's go ahead and enable this. Okay, but before we touch any settings for the rim light, make sure you select your object and check if the rotation is set to zero. So that way when we change the direction, it's easier for us to tell uh, what axis we, we need to change. So by default is set to 0.5 at the local X axis and 1.0 at the Z axis. So the rim light direction is a bit uh, pointing on the, on the side here. If I now reset the local X, you see that rim light direction is pointing directly upwards. So now if I move the Y, you can see it's getting towards Y uh, axis. So play around with these uh, settings so you get the direction as you like. Uh, then we change the rim light bias to actually change the size of the specular highlight. And of course you can change the intensity and rim light color. But I think the white should work pretty much okay at this scenario. And one last thing about the rim lights. Uh, by default it uses, uh, let's say, world orientation. So it doesn't matter if I rotate my object or not, the rim light or the artificial light always points at the same direction. However, if you'd like to lock uh, this rim light to emphasize, you know, certain spot, you can do that with this checkbox. So now, if I rotate my object, you, you see that the rim light follows the rotation. Now, all the procedural effects we've enabled rely on the mesh and its surface geometry. I needed a way to make it look more organic without using, you know, a super high poly object. And you know what? There's a method that's been around for ages that does exactly that. Normal maps. However, we have an unlit material that isn't shaded like a typical PBR material, but it's still possible.
So what I got here is a really small wave pattern normal map that used triplanar projection, similar to what we had in the detail layer. So now I can drop uh, the projection scale and just pay attention to what it does to uh, our procedural effects. So I can change the offsets, uh, rotation, uh, change its intensity, intensity, and I can go even negative numbers. So what's cool about this, let's say, normal map approach is that you don't actually need to use a typical normal map. So let's say you got this fancy pattern and it dramatically changes the, uh, the way rim lights or fake reflection look like. But for now, let me use the default wave normal, adjust its size so, you know, it looks more organic for, for an apple. Okay, last but not least, the fake outline effect. It really helps to separate your objects from the background. It looks the best on curved and smooth surfaces, making it perfect for, for this apple. You can adjust uh, manually the intensity, where one makes it completely black, and of course, change outline size. So there you have it. You have just created your first stylized material. I know it may seem like a complex process at first, but once you get familiar with the parameters, it only takes seconds. And since it's all procedural, you can update it anytime. Creating a different version is even simpler. Just use material chaining. Create a new instance from the material instance you made and all the parameters are preserved and work as a template. Now, just adjust the color and you're done. A quick way to make more apples. Okay guys, that wraps up the first part of this overview. I really tried my best to explain the material as simple as possible, but as you can see, it gives you a lot of artistic control. Now, I encourage you to check out the templates I've included in the pack. And in the next part, we're gonna convert a photorealistic asset into a stylized one. Thanks for watching.